Welcome to the Latte Lounge podcast. Join me, your host, Katie Taylor, as we talk balancing hormones, busting myths, breaking taboos, boosting libidos, and bolstering confidence. Why not grab a coffee or go for a walk and join us in the Latte Lounge as we chat all things midlife, menopause, and beyond. With thanks to our friends at Silk Natural Lubricant for making this podcast possible. In this episode, I'm going to be talking to life coach and Olympian, Michelle Griffiths Robinson. I first interviewed Michelle for the Midlife Festival in 2021, all about self-belief and confidence. And honestly, it was such an inspiring conversation that I knew I just had to have her back for this podcast. Michelle represented Great Britain for two decades as a triple jumper, competing at the highest level, including at the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. She was the first woman to jump over 14 metres in the Commonwealth. Since then, she's combined her passion for fitness and personal growth and is now a coach and mentor for individuals and organisations. Today, we're going to be chatting all about positive mindset in midlife, how to avoid the comparison trap, how to get yourself out of a rut and feeling great about yourself, and what self-care really means for us busy women. I promise you, by the end of this conversation with Michelle, you're going to feel energized, empowered, and excited about the possibilities in life. So welcome, Michelle. It's so good to speak to you again. Hi, my lovely. I've been super excited about this today. So um, yeah, thank you for having me back on again. Ah, lovely. Now listen, your um, confidence is always so inspiring for me. And I guess let's address that first, because people will see you and go, there's Michelle, she's an Olympian, someone who regularly is on, you know, magazine covers, and she's got Mm. this great successful (laughs) career coaching business. And they'll think, well, she's already confident, but I could never be like her. So can you maybe tell us first a little bit about your own confidence journey that sort of got you to where you are today? So, um, I I love the fact of people's perception, which is always one of the, the key things. And I and I remember, and this is just going aside, I was in the playground dropping off my kids um, about 10 years ago. And a woman came up to me and she said, my God, you've always got your shit together. How do you get your shit together? How are you always looking so great and everything else? And I said, I said, thank you for your perception. I said, that's really kind of you through, through your lens. You don't know what I've been through to be where I am today. So I think it's really important for women, our listeners, to understand that there are things that you go through in your life that people don't see. So they don't see when you're literally battered, excuse the pun, um, and struggling. They don't see that. They don't see when, you know, you come out of an abusive relationship and you've lost your confidence. All they see is what you show them. Mm. And I'm going to be very transparent here. I am a confident female. I can walk into a room packed full of women, men, whoever it may be and shine because I'm confident within my own skin now. But and how did you get there? How, how, how did were you, get, so, yeah, were you always like that? As a young girl, I was always confident. I grew up with three older brothers. So three older brothers, I had to have a voice. You know, I'm the youngest, only girl. Um, I had to stand up for myself. So that's where I had my voice from. Unfortunately, through, through, through life, you meet different people and relationships can change you and circumstances change you and almost dulled me down. How did I get my confidence back? By constantly working on me. Yeah, so it's working on me and recognizing what are my strengths. So you know what? People see me, they see me in a lovely fitted dress. Yes, I've got a nice fit body. Um, Pre-diabetic, may may I add, so they don't see that bit, yeah? I'm still constantly having to watch what I eat because of my, my, my condition and which has posed challenges to my family right now as we speak. So I have to look after myself in and out. I put on a nice dress, I don't have any stretch marks. I've got saggy boobs, but I've got on a brilliant bra. So these are things people don't see, but I can genuinely tell you now, how did I get there? From working on me. Yeah, and it's funny, isn't it? Because I think people often think, well, if, as time spent on yourself is is actually quite selfish. And, and it's not, you know, we hear all these sound bites all the time that yes. you know, self, you know, it, it's self-care and, and it's not selfish, but but it, it's true. And and for those that um are listening, Michelle actually was on our first um, midlife festival. So I do urge you to uh, watch that if you get a chance, because we talk, we go into a lot more detail about your your life as going growing yeah. up and, and as an yeah. Olympian but today I want to focus on this sort of the confidence element yeah. 
you now coach women what, what do you see as some of the sort of root causes of their lack of confidence especially this sort of you know midlife age 40s yeah. and 50s and, and where does menopause play a part in that so I, I get women as a life coach and a mentor to a lot of women um generally women my age range would generally start from anywhere from 25 right up really and when I'm talking about midlife women the, the, the reasons they come to me really is they want a magic pill they want the magic word and I often say to them if I'm coaching them you've got all the answers within you however they come to me with low self-esteem they come to me because they're overweight they're not feeling on their a game they have imposter syndrome all these words that we've been hearing over the last few years you know and I say to them tell me something when go back to a time when you felt really good what was it about you that why you felt good well I was slimmer I was this I said but does that change who you are because of your body shape or is that because you put on something and you feel better in it and all the answers we've got within ourselves so I do get a lot of midlife women coming to me through lack of confidence and of course we all know that menopause plays a massive massive part in reducing your confidence mm -hmm. equally it also plays a part where actually you're at the age now where you feel more confident in who you are. You're not running around and chasing and looking for that next love, or you're not, you know, you've made a decision, you don't want children. So you're actually comfortable in your progression and where you feel you're going. So that's very clear. So I have a lot of women who actually, when they look at their lives, they think, actually, I'm not doing too bad. But it does come down to when you look, when you break it down, self-esteem can constantly knock yourself. So how do we turn that around? We turn it around, we are, and it sounds really fluffy, and a bit ridiculous at times, positive affirmations. Look in the mirror and reel out to yourself the great things about you. Reel out what's great about you. So, so I'm, my name's Katie, I run a brilliant business. I'm always in communicating with other women, connecting other women, highlighting other women, showcasing other women. That's a quality, Katie, yeah? And when you sit down, you, you break it down like that, you know, actually, so I might be a couple of pounds heavier, but let's look at the positives of the great things I'm doing. It, it's so funny. I mean, you're talking to me and I'm sitting here thinking, oh my God, I need Michelle's help because, you know, I, I've I've personally always had very low self-esteem. Um, don't ask me why, that's for another day. Um, and I look at, you know, I do, I look at women like you and think, God, I'd love to be able to walk in to room with that confidence. And I think uh, someone told me, it might have even been you when we first spoke actually, that, you know, how would you talk to your best friend? And that some of the lovely things I say to my best friends which are real and truthful I never say to myself ever I only ever push and pull myself down which so many women do so do. I mean you know when you have women in front of you well, what are some of those sort of first steps then so they can take obviously these p positive affirmations yeah. well, what else what other tools to regain their sort of confidence and get that that's I don't know that spark, spark of life yeah fire back yeah. in their belly I yeah. often make them write down their values and beliefs. And I then it, it, when they write it down, because the great thing is when you've written things down as, as a coach and you say to them, right, make sure you come to my session with your pen and paper or your diary that's dedicated to you. It starts to allow them to see things on paper and take ownership of themselves. So tell me, write down the great things about you. Write down what your family would say about you. Write down what your work colleagues would say about you. Or, write, be truthful. They would say, I'm very organized. They would say, I'm on it. I'm the first one to put my hand up to help somebody. I said, and these are things we have to remember. They are qualities and values. Mm. They are qualities and values that we cannot underestimate. Reaching out to somebody. Katie, I came on the, on, on the, on the podcast here and within the first five minutes, you asked me how I am. And then you reach out to me to say, my mum lives down the road from you. Da, 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 da. Michelle, if there's anything I can do, that makes you a bloody brilliant human being and a kind person. And those are the people we need around. We need to start looking at. So I make women write down, write down the best qualities about you. Write them down, repeat after me, say them out loud. And then when they leave, some of them are bawling when they leave. And they're like, Michelle, I mean, I feel stupid. I said, why do you feel stupid? I said, because I've got the answers. I said, I told you you have. You just didn't have the tools to extract those answers from you. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I, I wasn't actually going to ask you this, but I'm just thinking out loud that I don't meet many men like this. Um, they're very, they seem, well, certainly the men in my life are very, very keen to tell me how amazing they are all the time. They do. <laughs> I don't know what it is about women, but 
you know, I'll tell you all the things I'm really bad at. And, you yeah. know, I'm embarrassed to say that I'm good at anything, which is just is weird. Look, I mean, we've touched on on menopause and obviously there are all these physical changes that happen. Yeah. So perhaps it's the weight gain, the hair thinning, the aging yeah. skin, um, and they can be huge barriers to us feeling good about ourselves. So, you know, you know, how do you work around those things? Is it about just accepting where you are and and, and sort of loving where you are or, or do you, it, you know, try and help them change and, and get back to kind of where they were? Which is it, not depends on, it, it depends on them, to be honest with you, Katie. You know, if they come back to me and they say, Michelle, you know, I want to lose weight. I'm like, OK, so let's identify why you want to lose weight. What's it for? Who's it for? If it's for yourself and you want to feel great about yourself. So, OK, so lose a couple of pounds. But I almost go on the tact of let's get fitter. So I work on that. Let's get fitter rather than let's get slimmer. So let's get fitter. So let's set ourselves some targets and challenges. You know, when's the last time you went for a 5K walk with your friend up the hills? When's the last time you connected with somebody else? So that's almost what I go on. So I look at it. So they're getting the, the result they want. They are going to feel better afterwards, but I'm getting them out all the time. So I'm changing that side of things, constantly change that side of things. We know that the hair thinning, the weight loss, we know all those things do make a big, the, the saggy skin do make a difference. But then I often say to them, how many women do you know that aren't here to tell that story? Yeah. And that let, allows me to stop because I know a few. Absolutely. I, I, and, and the same here. You know, I, we, I've lost a good friend, uh, two good friends, and they would they would bite off my right hand. There you go. To have there you go. Hair. Yeah, there you go. And that's when I and when you put it into reality, and I know it's not always it, it is. It's not always good to go there, you know, but when you stop and think, think. And I often say and it sounds again, very fluffy again. I'm here with my fluffy self thinking. But stop and think to yourself, I would rather have my no hair self but watch my kids grow up and give them something back so they can feel better about themselves when they're my age. Yeah. I mean, so look, fitness is a tool for you, um, you know, I'm sure. And, and actually, you and I were sitting together at um, an event. And, um, I think it was Andrew McLean. Andrew McLean. Yeah. yeah. And you said to me, and I was saying I find it really, I, I do enjoy fitness, but I find it hard. And, and you said to me, fitness is non-negotiable. And, and that was a really, that was another sort of little light bulb moment for me, because actually there are so many things that I make non-negotiable, like whatever it is, brushing my teeth or just yes. putting my shoes on. Yes. But why is it that so many of us will, will, will think, oh, I'm just going to sleep another half an hour. And then you get up and you think, oh, I can't be bothered. And yes. we'll, we'll find a million excuses not to get fit. Yeah. Um, and yet it's so good for us, isn't it? <laughs> well, 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 you know, you are talking to somebody here that, you know, forget me being an Olympian. I, I often say to people, I'm an Olympian because I have a talent that I decide to continue to use. Yeah. So that, you know, that still makes me, I'm just as human as everybody else out there. Um, but what I would say to somebody is fitness is a big, big thing for me. It makes me feel great. So that extra half an hour in bed. And I've been there, Katie. I was there, you know, this morning. I was like, no, I can't get up. I'm too tired. And I made that very clear. However, today's my non-negotiable training day. So I've scheduled in my day. I will be training today. So I know that I'm now training at six o'clock with my daughters. I know that's happening. So it's about making myself priority and holding myself to account. So the easiest way around that for me, and it's a little bit of information that I share, write down the days that you're going to do something. Check in with a friend and say to your friend, Katie, we said six o'clock today. Yeah, okay, darling, we're off now. Make it a priority. Check in with your husband. Tim, I need your support to make sure that I'm gone. Don't book anything in. Don't consider me for going out any dinners. I'm going for my walk from six to half six. Yes, darling, off you go. And you allow that person to hold you to account. And sometimes you won't want to go for that six o'clock walk because it's raining outside and there's, oh, there's washing on the floor. You need Tim to say, go and do your walk. Get out of here. The washing's going to stay. It's not going to, nothing's not going to happen bad. Go outside. You're not going to disintegrate with the rain go and do your walk. And when you start creating habits, because we can all feel motivated. I feel good right now. I want to do my thing. Da, 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 da. It's January. Da, da, da. But you want to form good, solid habits. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've started, uh, I've said it before, but I leave my trainers by my bed. So I've got to literally trip over them. To get... <laughs> there you go. And sometimes you will still trip over them and not put them on, but that's okay too. But you've got to make those less occasions. 
Absolutely. Now, look, we, we've talked about how sort of staying fit can help with your confidence. Um, and I'd like to sort of look at sort of some other tools. Now, at the Midlife Festival this year and last year, I spoke to a couple of uh, midlife sort of style gurus, a lovely yeah. lady called Gloria Smythe and Jacinda Bassett. And they were talking about how style plays a massive mm. part in their confidence. And I took a note from Gloria, which was to wear colour. I'm wearing green. Yes. Today. I always wore black or yes. beige so yes. that I could hide in the background you yes. when I look at your Instagram um every day I'm smiling because you're bright pink and then you're yeah. green and um, yeah. I mean is that one of your tips for women about being seen or if absolutely <laughs> so I am today ironically I'm wearing a, a, a wearing black pink bra and a black vest <laughs> uh, because I'm going training and because there was nothing else clean in the house that's my top tip there however ordinarily I would be wearing bright bold empowering colors because that's what makes me feel good and I say to people all the time we've done enough years of being invisible now's our time to be visible and so that's why encouragement when you put on that pop of color on a rainy day you feel automatically better psychologically it's been proven scientifically it's been proven you feel better with more color around you so I I just naturally gravitate towards color I, I've even put them in my in my own will. No one's allowed to wear black to my funeral. Yeah, my opening song is optimistic. You're going to go in there and you're going to dance and celebrate my life with your bold, bright colours. <laughs> because colours is what makes us feel great. When you see how many people walk past a blossoming flower, yeah, with those sharp, bright colours and say, oh, that's ugly. We're naturally drawn to it. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I think a lot of us would like to sort of hide in the background and not stand out. But every time I see you, I think, God, I must take note from that. And, and, the, and the makeup and the hair and, yeah. you know, yeah. nails. These are things that can make us look good. Doesn't matter what size we are. We what, can... si what size? We are. And let's not let's not let's get rid of this size thing. Yeah. You know, I'm a size 10, 12, size 11 in between. And I'm pre-diabetic. I know women that are size 14 and are fit and they've got nothing. They don't have to consider anything. Mm -hmm. No heart disease. So let's get ourselves off that. Oh, you slimmer is better. That's what we've been indoctrinated with over the years. And that's one of the things I'm telling my daughters. I want you to be fit, cardio fit. I want you to be able to run for a bus without not fear. I want you to be able to walk up and down the stairs. Yeah. And I want to start branding myself out there. And you're the first one to hear it, Katie, out publicly as the moderate living because I want women to stop to get off this perfectionism get off this oh I'm not I'm going to starve myself I'm going to do dry January I'm going to do this no let's start being moderate about what we do moderate lifestyle three four days a week doing some form of movement doesn't have to be weight training like me it means getting out brisk walking up the hill with your dog going out for a talk a conversation with your friend because it helps your mental health yeah, it doesn't have to be, oh, I've got to train five days a week. Oh, I've got to eat this. I've got to cut that out. I've got, no, let's start doing moderate living. Let's be the moderate woman. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's everything. I'm not saying I want to be average. There's nothing average about me. I want to be exceptional for Michelle. But I'm gonna, I want to, women to let go of this perfection. Are we, you've got to train five days a week. You've got to detox in January. That's nonsense. How about be moderate from January right through to December? Yeah. And also, we're, you know, we're the sandwich generation. We're juggling so much. You know, oh. It can be overwhelming when, you know, you were talking about your own mum at the beginning and, oh. you know, and then you've got your kids. And it's like it, it is sometimes you just feel, well, God, there's just no time left for me. But I think, you know, those are I was going to ask you, what are some of the biggest mistakes you perhaps see women make when it comes to boosting self-esteem and confidence? But I'm sure one of them will be just not making time for themselves number one would be not making time for themselves not making themselves priority would be my biggest thing um mm. that's number one not making yourself priority also the, the the other thing is like you like you said and you put it so eloquently when you are that we are that sandwich generation where we've got our aging parents we've got ourselves that are midlife menopausal perimenopausal postmenopausal then we've got our children that we're trying to still guide yeah and then sometimes it does become overwhelming and sometimes that's when, again, when I say to you going to going out for a talk, a talk, a walk and talk with your friend, that's when you do need to reach out and let people know, do you know what? I'm not feeling great. I would love a cup of coffee and your support. But actually letting it go. Stop this. Oh, I'm great. I feel great. I'm fit. And this perception sometimes can cause a 
bigger, deeper mental health issue. Because yeah. we're trying to pretend. And that's why I say I live myself authentically. I am who I am. I'm 32 F breasts, bit saggy at times, put on a brilliant bra, hoist them up, put on a lovely shirt, and I feel fabulous. Yeah, life is not always easy, and I'm, and I'm not going to pretend it is. Now it's probably the hardest it's been in my life because my mum is my best friend. And watching her decline is deep for me. It's deep. I feel it because she's my best friend. My hero is my mummy. Yeah. But you know what my mum would say to me? Michelle, get out there and dress up and go and live your life. Absolutely. You're making me, well, you're making me tear up. But but you're you're look, you're very brave, you're very honest, you're very open, Michelle. And I'm sure your mum is has taught you well, and that's why you are who you are, because of your mum. Um, and and look, you know, and, and you know, let's talk quickly about comparison because you know, we might have this positive mindset, but it, yeah. it, it's hard, you know, social media all the time, it's so hard not to compare yourself to others. They everyone appears to be doing amazing. And oh, I wish I was like her. And um, so, well, so do you have some tips, um, you know, for sort of avoiding that comparison game when you're trying to be, when you're trying really hard to be confident? <laughs> I, I, absolutely. I, I think the, the, the biggest word that you say that is appears. <laughs> so I think that's the biggest one you have to remember. How real is this? You know, we, we generally only share, you know, our best bits. We don't generally share the bits where, you know, where I'm feeling quite tearful or emotional. I'm not generally sharing that. And I will do, though. I will share that. I want to really really emphasize about the problems of being diabetic so I will share that story about my mum and what is caused her in her latter life um however I would say to you if some if, a, if somebody's Instagram isn't adding value to your psyche your mental health to you delete and move on watch what you're looking at is what you're looking at are you just scrolling through because you're bored is there something else you could be doing is there a self-care book you could be picking up instead yeah have a shut off point because I think that I'm in, I'm included in this this bracket of scrolling through and thinking, oh my god, what's she doing? What's, but I actually I don't look to compare myself. I look to choose for music. What music would go better with me? What I'm what I'm trying to do. So I don't look to compare. I'm being honest with you. I'm not there to compare myself. I hear people say to me all the time, "Sure, you've only got about five thousand followers." I said, "You know what? If I can affect and impact one woman's life, mm. it's worth ten billion pounds to me." Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so it's recognizing what's the reality there and sometimes we need a reality check it's not all what it seems uh, really really sensible advice and I've taken your advice actually before and I there's a, a lot I, I try very I try very hard not to go on social media for more than I mean my work is on social media and it can be all encompassing you can end up living inside your computer and not meeting real people absolutely so, Katie, so, so, amen you, what, what you touched before I let you go just a couple more things you touched on a self-care book okay yeah. so, so you know we all agree that social media is, is probably terrible for all of us really yeah. that, it, that does a lot of good a lot but, of positive yeah, yeah lots of positive but what does self-care mean for you and and when you're feeling like today you know yeah. we, we've talked about your yeah. mum who's diabetic and again yeah. if people listen to our first interview they'll hear more about why you're an ambassador for for you know diabetes um, association and talking about these things yes yeah. what would you do on a day like today and for self-care and how what would you advise other women when you're, you're feeling like this for, for number one I, I rang my best friend this morning and had a real good chat and a cry on the phone so that's what I did um again vulnerability is strength um I then went said to make myself a nice breakfast a nice breakfast some time out um, I told, I checked in with my agent to said to her, at the moment, I'm not taking on anything for today. I've got one thing planned, so we'll talk tomorrow. So again, setting boundaries around how I'm feeling. Because sometimes then when you're not feeling great, you might say yes to stuff, you may, may say no to stuff. So that's a really key point for our listeners here. When you're not feeling great and you're self-employed, um, it's very different when you're employed. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking through the lens of someone that's self-employed. It's easier, to, and it's not to turn down work, is to give yourself some space to think. Yeah, so give yourself the space. Sometimes we're very reactionary. Something comes in. Oh, yeah, yeah, let me do that. Yes, 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 yes. No, give yourself space to think. Somebody asked me if I could be on a panel, you know, um, for some, a, a judging panel in a few months' time. I said, I manage their expectations by saying, at the moment, I can't really do that. I can't say yes, sex. I think it would take up too much of my time. And again, managing other people's expectations. So on a day like today, when I'm not feeling 
I said, right, I'm training at six o'clock my daughters. That's my non-negotiable. So I'm looking forward to that. I've cooked my tea early. So I'm organized. My house is nice and clean. That's brilliant. I'm doing a podcast with you. Tick. And I'm positive around that. And also as well, I'm using some fantastic products that I feel blessed. You know, that Lossy Tan have been gifting me lots of lovely products. So I spent a lot of time in the shower, almost giving myself my own homemade, homemade spa. So that's what I did with myself today. I had a good cry in the morning. This, this late morning, afternoon, I said, let me invest in me some time out. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not having to do invoices, not, not doing that. And because I shared that information, I felt less overwhelmed. And actually everything you've mentioned there is free. So self-care doesn't go. have to cost anything. You get a there phone call, phone call, good nutrition, exercise, walking, uh, you know, and chatting and to me, it's free. <laughs> time, free, and it's time. <laughs> exactly. And it allows me some headspace. And actually what is done for me, I've offloaded. And, and you said boundaries and boundaries don't oh. just mean, and not just work, but kids and, and friends and parents say at the moment, kids, I, I'm so don't just leave me alone for half an hour. <laughs> Absolutely, Casey. And, um, you know, my daughter said to me um, just now, she said, uh, mommy, what is it can I can do? So I said, baby, do me a favor. Do the dishwasher for me. You do the dishwasher. Make sure that's all done for me. I've done the dinner. She said, do you want me to cook dinner tonight? I said, no, 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 I'm going to carry that on. So again, having that dialogue where you've got people there to support how you're feeling. Mm. And don't get me wrong, that's not all the time that can happen. Let's not pretend here. But how some, some days are more overwhelming and you're a little bit sadder than others. Recognising that, reaching out for support. 100%. So, and that's what we're here for as well. It's all about support and just support. You know, caring for each other. So look, this um, has been an amazing chat. And obviously I could talk to you all day, but I want to let you go. But um, if you know, this is a positive sort of mindset um, yeah. episode of this podcast. So can you share some parting advice or tips to anyone listening about, you know, self-confidence, loving themselves and, and just taking care of them for a change? First and foremost, um, you've got to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you can help anybody else. So number one, second tip, boundaries. Yeah, in and outside of the home. Set some boundaries so that you stay a little bit more in control. Don't say yes to everything. Yes, as great as it may seem, sometimes when you're saying yes to this social event, yes to that social event, you end up being on burnout and lack of sleep. Get some brilliant sleep. Mm -hmm. And we, we, uh, that's something that I do want to work on, uh, on a lot this year, is really talking about the emphasis of good sleep allows you to feel better, brighter, more confident to deal with everyday challenges. Absolutely. And, and for anyone that um, hasn't listened to our uh, series before this series, I've done a fantastic episode with Professor Guy Leishner, um, all about midlife sleep. Um, I yeah. had a terrible night's sleep. <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm going to have to re-listen to it. And in menopause, sleep can be a real oh, issue for us. So It can be really tricky. Yeah, it can, be, it can be tricky. And when you're talking about confidence, it's about, again, write down your list of how great you are. Yeah list them and keep listing them and when you've listed them put them somewhere and those days where you're feeling not feeling quite your sharp self and you're going somewhere and you're feeling a little bit imposter syndrome go back to your list because mm. it doesn't change who you are and remember something as we part this conversation an extra two three four five six seven eight pounds doesn't mean you're a bad person Absolutely. Well, look, Michelle, thank you so much again, as ever, for coming on. And how can people find out more about your coaching and your mentoring uh, services? Um, and, you know, I know you've got a website as well. Yeah. So I've yeah. got my website, which is um, Michelle Griffith Robinson, OLY.co.uk. I'm on at Michelle Griffith Robinson on Instagram, at Robinson OLY on Twitter. And you'll find me on, on LinkedIn as well with my whole name, Michelle Griffith Robinson. But, guys, I always say this when I'm part of any conversation. It'd be wonderful for you to find me, but make sure you find you before you find me. Oh, lovely. Well, thank you again. We'll put all that in the show notes, but I hope everyone that was listening found that helpful and sending lots of love and, and you, wishes darling. to your mummy and to you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Latty Lounge podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, it would mean a lot if you could subscribe wherever you're listening so you don't miss an episode. And finally, before I go, I just wanted to remind you to check out the episode show notes for all our extra resources. 
You'll find links in there for our free Facebook group and our free symptom checker. So you can track your own symptoms against a list of the 34 most common symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. See our show notes for more. This podcast was sponsored by Silk Natural Lubricant and produced by Emily Crosby Media.